Welcome to post 316, the methodology of comparative politics, study session 1, the subject matter of comparative politics, introduction. This lecture will examine the general background information about comparison, comparative politics and comparative political analysis. It has seven sub themes which range from the definitions of basic concepts like method, comparisons, and comparative politics to the genesis of comparative politics as a course of study and the merits or usefulness of the area of study. Learning outcomes. At the end of this study session, it's expected that you will be able to one understand and describe the basic concepts that are directly related to comparative politics. 2. Identify the usefulness of this area of study as well as its relationship with other areas in the field of political science. As we shall soon show, the subject matter of comparative politics and more precisely the methodology of comparative politics can be fully understood when it is arranged into subsections. For our own purpose, we will have six of such subsections that are listed in A to F below. A. What is a method? For the purpose of this course, we may define a method as a particular way or manner in which something is done. In other words, a method is a specific or precise style or approach that is applied in carrying out an assignment which can be in the form of a research study examination or experiment. A very good example of an exercise where a method is applicable in politics or political science is the conduct of elections or even the arrangement of a whole country into small voting districts, zones or constituencies. We may need to get a step further by saying that a method is systematic and scientific because it has observable steps stages and patterns that are supposed to be followed when it's applied for a particular assignment. In fact, the application of methods in the study of politics accounts for the adoption of the name science of politics or political science. By extension, methodology literally means the logic of method, or in other words, the means by which we attempt to discover, prove or demonstrate some truth or fact about a subject matter or particular assignment. Therefore, methodology can be described as a step-by-step -step application of methods. B. Why do we need methodologies in political science? We need to ask this question first and foremost because methodology is part of our course title in post 316. The methodology of comparative politics. Secondly, it is popularly believed that comparative political analysis is an aspect in the field of political science which helps to establish the scientific nature of this field of study. Although political science may be rated lower than its counterparts like economics, geography, psychology and sociology, especially in terms of the scientific accuracy of the results of its research studies, the subject has over the years made efforts to be more exact accurate and scientific than others like history, philosophy, etc. In the light of the above, methodologies as they are applied in the pure science like chemistry, physics, mathematics, engineering, medicine, etc. are also useful in political science and other aspects of the social sciences for rational analysis. It is also necessary to note that methodology, like in the pure science, is to help in fact-seeking as well as fact-using, while the ultimate goal of science is the classification of facts and on the basis of such classification, the formulation of a body of general rules and logically consistent and universally valid statements is achieved. Examples include algebra and Pythagoras in mathematics, the principle of Archimedes in physics and so on. Furthermore, we need to know that the scientific method entails vigorous procedures which start from the selection of a problem to 
to be analyzed or solved, followed by formulation or hypothesis, gathering of data and testing of hypotheses, and finally, the use of findings to refute, modify or support existing theories. Therefore, for any methodology to be scientific, it must be verifiable, systematic, and have general applicability. It is verifiable when it is empirical and could be tested by others. For example, in Nigeria, whenever any individual proclaims anything about a pharmaceutical item or other food items, the government insists that such items must be verified by NAVDAC. In this verification exercise, the ultimate goal is to confirm claims made by a manufacturer, producer, or an author in the case of a theory or academic claim. On the other hand, knowledge is said to be systematic when it is organized into an intelligible pattern or structure with clearly stated significant relationships. To achieve a system, scientists seek out similarities and differences by putting things together. In doing this, they also look for relationships, whether correlations or casual relations. Finally, having general applicability means the attempt to create the maximum possible extent for the adoption of a particular knowledge, method, or theory. Take for example, while the information or knowledge provided in the telephone directory may be systematic and verifiable, in that it is arranged alphabetically and orderly it may not have a general applicability. This, for instance, is because the telephone directory for the city of Bombay, India, will be useless in Lagos, Nigeria. C. What is comparison all about? To compare simply means to set things like individuals, structures, institutions, governments, body of knowledge, teams, groups, or even different parts of a particular object together in order to examine how far they agree or disagree. In doing this, certain characteristics that account for similarities or differences, for example, age, environment, history, height, etc., are carefully selected for examination or analysis. At the end of the examination or analysis, conclusions are drawn and a report is produced. In more practical terms, we can compare individuals like Shegu, Femi, and Benga of the DLC University of Ibadan, Nigeria, with Mercy and Ronaldo of Barcelona and Real Madrid football clubs, respectively, on a general comparative note. While for the purpose of comparative politics, we can examine the PDP of Nigeria and the Republicans of the United States of America, respectively. D. What is comparative politics? It is an arm, a branch, or sub-discipline in the broader area of study called political science. Essentially, comparative politics is a method or approach of inquiry which places emphasis on the comparison of major similarities and differences in two or more phenomena, such as governmental or administrative systems, types of regimes, political behavior, voting behavior, voting pattern, the behavior of groups like political parties, pressure groups, interest groups, trade unions, etc. For further illustrations, students should be informed that comparative parties can be adopted for the explanation of activities in different institutions of government, like federal and unitary systems, or types of governments like monarchy, oligarchy, aristocracy, and democracy. Also, it can be applied to seek explanations for the classification of countries like United States of America, Great Britain, Switzerland, Sweden, Germany, Japan, Denmark, Netherlands, Canada, and Australia as the best governed in the world, while Somalia, Sudan, Niger, Nigeria, and some others are categorized as the worst governed. Is it because of the differences in their population sizes? What about their levels of democratic attainment? Is it because of the level of unemployment, poverty, health service delivery, educational attainment, or a combination of all these factors? It must be added 
that comparison or comparative analysis is so important that all the other areas in the field of political science can be brought under the comparative framework. These include comparative public administration, comparative federalism, comparative civil military relations, and so on. E. Genesis of comparative politics. In view of the long history of politics, as well as its study, the comparative aspect of the field of study must equally have a long history. For ease of reference, we may link the genesis of comparative politics to the efforts of early philosophers like Aristotle, who, for instance, collected information about a large number of diverse constitutions and used them to explain the workings and operations of different types of governments and political systems more than 2,000 years ago. However, the modern or contemporary idea of comparative politics is often traced to the post-Second World War era, when many American political scientists and their counterparts from many parts of Europe began to have considerable relationship and exchange of ideas with economists, sociologists, social psychologists, and even natural scientists. In a simple language, contemporary comparative politics emerged from the more formal teaching of political science, which began when some universities in the United States of America and Europe began to establish full-fledged departments of government and political science. However, over time, information technology and other scientific breakthroughs have assisted in the spread of comparative politics. F. What are the merits of comparative politics? In view of the fact that comparative politics is a tool that is adopted for the examination and explanation of similarities and differences, in and between corporate entities, political systems or countries, why these methodologies can also be applied for the study of individual political behaviors. There are certain merits or strong points that are important to be highlighted. These include 1. Comparative politics helps in the clarification of some general statements that are often made in the field of politics or political science. Take for example, when political scientists look at the political parties or socialization processes in two or more societies, they are able to clarify certain generalizations or value-laden statements that are often made about different political systems. For example, French political parties are more revolutionary in nature. The average British is more conservative than his French, German or American counterparts. Corruption is more endemic in military government or autocratic system. In such instances, the questions that may arise to guide the comparative exercise may include A. What in the history of France made its social, political and probably economic institutions more revolutionary than most of its counterparts in Europe? B. What has geography or climatic conditions got to do with political culture? C. How does economic well-being affect voting behavior or voting pattern? D. Finally, why is the democracy generally believed to be better than military and other forms of non-participatory government types? 2. The comparative approach encourages the use or adoption of some scientific methods or techniques like sampling, interview, and questionnaire which help in establishing a more solid, exact, and scientific foundation for political science as a field of study. 3. With the adaptation of the scientific techniques, comparative politics in a way provides for the lack of absolute standards of measurement which had hitherto constituted an obstacle to accuracy in the field of political science. What I mean by these is that the adoption of the tool of comparison in politics can lay the foundation for some widely accepted rules like the plus and the minus, division and multiplication signs, and similar to other signs used in mathematics and other mathematical sciences that are currently non-existent in political science as a field of study. Comparison makes political science more understandable and makes political analysis and inquiry quite interesting study session summary. 
The application of method in the study of politics can be traced to the advent of the behavioral revolution in political science. It developed to complement the older philosophical, legalistic, and institutional outlook of the course of study. Meanwhile, the contemporary or modern idea of comparative politics is often traced to the post-Second World War era. Essentially, comparison helps in the attempt to have a science of politics because it borrows from diverse areas of human knowledge to establish certain widely acceptable facts. End of study session one. Thank you for listening.